that frustrating? Is that after you know, holding the lead for so long until late? Uh, yes, a little bit frustrating, to be honest. Uh, not frustrated that we conceded the goal, because I think probably on the second half performance that Newcastle deserved something, because we didn't play to our levels. But it is a game when you get your nose in front, you should probably clearly hang on. It wasn't as if they burnt the goal. You know, it was a, a dubious penalty call. On the penalty, I yep. mean, it was looked at closely. Yep. What are your thoughts on it? Well, I think whenever you ask a coach who's of the opposing team that is given against, he will say that he doesn't think it's a penalty. But what I say is, listen, if you're going to give that a penalty, the penalty in the first half is a penalty. Right? It just seems to be too many times we get on the wrong end of calls. I think I've been in Australia for a year. I don't think I've had a penalty, which is amazing. And that was my frustration. I was frustrated for the boys because they put a lot of work in. And sometimes you've got to roll your sleeves up and fight and dig in. And they, they did that in the second half. Newcastle put us under pressure, especially in the first 15, 20 minutes. And then the ref gives a call like that. Uh, and it wasn't probably any different from the decisions in the game, which clearly that's why you gave it. What do you make of the challenge? Was there just not enough contact for you? To, to well, I don't know. Listen, because you, the if you read the guidelines and everyone loves textbooks or, or on in the internet, uh, it has to be clear and obvious or it needs to be... Um, directed by that, what that does is it allows everyone to just sit on the fence and then you don't know whether to blame him, him or her, whoever it may be. And doing that creates a, a grey area and I think that's the problem you have, not just here, but it seems to happen here more, uh, but in football in general because you see decision after decision. So am I frustrated? Yeah, I'm frustrated for the guys in there because they put a lot of work in, but the inconsistency really, really bothers me. The others will have some other questions on the game. Just wanted yeah. to ask you about Tate Russell and his performance yeah. and, and his development, though. Your thoughts on him? He's been excellent, Tate, to be fair, from the first day I walked in. Uh, he's He needs to believe a little bit more. I think he he now is getting to a stage where he does really, really well in certain aspects and then some, sometimes he second-guesses himself. Like the run, I think the run's an example of he, he wins the ball in transition, he drives forward 60, 70 yards and he's in the box seat and then he probably has a doubt in his mind before pulling the trigger. And that's the area that we can work on him with it. It's not going to happen overnight, but he's got tremendous power on his legs. Uh, he's, got, he's a good kid. He wants to learn as well. Um, so he performed very well again today, as he has done in the first three, four games. Vince? Thanks, uh, Carl. Um, yeah. Uh, can you explain the sort of rationale for the, the, the subs late on? Tass in particular seemed to be having a really good game. Yeah. He um, why'd, why'd you yeah, um, he, make that switch? He just had an ankle issue as well. And uh, because I had to use Coxie in the first, first half because of the injury to Nikolai, and then I wanted to obviously bring Kawami on. I only had one window left. So it was a case of I wanted to get Brucey and Geordie on because I thought they had, um, you know, looked bright in training. Um, and I didn't want to take the risk of Tass. I asked him five minutes prior if his ankle, and he said he was okay, but he didn't convince me with his answer. So that's why I'd done it. Okay. And how's uh, Nikolai? Yeah, but um, a bit sore to be fair. Uh, a bit sore. I think you saw in twenty minutes, Nikolai. What he, you know, it was it was great. He was enjoying his football. He was creating chances, um, and he was a big threat for us. So it was a big loss for us. But obviously, then Coxie come on and uh, helped us get the first goal. But that's what happens. That's why you need squads. Yeah, and just um, overall in terms of the first half performance versus the second half. Um, yeah. What happened there? Because you guys yeah. certainly edged him probably in a in a very open, uh, really good game yeah. in the first half, and then um, just sitting back, they were they were all over you. Yeah, no, that's not, I think that's fair. I think it's a fair assessment. I think the first half we were probably the better team. We deserved our goal. We probably should have scored a second just before half time, which um, maybe would have put the game out of sight. But in this league, if you don't put teams away when you have the chances, you know they always hang about and they always come back. So we didn't intentionally try and sit back. I think they had a little bit of momentum in the second half. They played a little bit of direct in certain aspects, regained control of the game um, for the first 15, 20 minutes. And we then we sat back and we couldn't get ourselves out and we couldn't string enough passes together to then regain control and then the transition moments happened um, which we didn't execute on three or four chances we had um, and it usually happens in football sometimes there's a, there's a ricochet a block or a chance and you know Ziggy Gordon made an unbelievable block from Roy O'Donovan which probably should be a goal you know, and if, if Roy would have scored his, I think it's 51st goal or 50th goal or whatever, then I would have said, yeah, no problem, um, because I think they deserve a goal in the second half. Glenn? I'm OK. I'm good, thank you. Jimmy? 
Oh, yeah, go, Carl. Um, <laughs> mate, you obviously spent a lot of time with this, the majority of this uh, Jets squad. I mean, did you see, can you see, have you seen improvement in there, mate? And um, I guess a lot of people wrote them off, but I guess you know the character of the place. They're, good, they're a good group of boys. I said that to you for the t- short time that I worked there. They're enjoyable to work with, they're good characters. You know, all they want is a little bit of guidance, and that's what I did when I was there. I gave them guidance, and I built relationships with them. So it didn't surprise me. It was a tough game today. They're a good team. Uh, the way they play, they've got good leaders in their team. They've got good players in their team, but so have we, which is why I think you saw a very entertaining first half that was very open, which is a good a good advert. Second half, I said, I think they were, they were the better team in the second half, and then they got their goal through a, a penalty. Fair enough. Thank you. All Can right. I buy anything from you? Nope. Uh, yeah, Carl, sorry. Okay. Um, I was just going to um, ask, you must be pretty happy for um, Bernie Ibini to get his first goal for the club. Yeah, I'm pleased for Bernie. Uh, again, it's it's easy to throw people in glass houses, shouldn't throw stones. And I say that with um, with a big smile on my face because people wanted to do that with Bernie. And I think it's unfortunate. You know, it's modern society that we're living in at the moment. And... You know, unless you know the things, people are too judgmental and too quick to point fingers and make opinions of people. And Bernie is a great lad. He's a terrific player. He's a good character and he, he's an honest boy. And I think the performance he put in today was, was fitting for Bernie. Uh, obviously, it's nice to score against his old team, even though he's a short time. But if you put the work in, you get the rewards. So pleased for him, um, you know, that he gets his goal. He, it'll, it'll get him up and running. Um, but no, nah, good for Bernie. He's a good lad. Can you discuss about the decision to start Bernie and put Simon yeah. Cox on the bench? Yeah, just just a feeling I had. Obviously, Bernie playing against his old team, I just mentioned there that, you know, sometimes it's football football works in weird ways like that. Sometimes that, you know, you get a chance or you try and silence your old team, especially because he got a bit of unfair criticism. Um, so that was the feeling I had. Cox, he played the first four games and done very well. And I just thought him his impact off the bench might allow him to get a chance or two, and it did. So it doesn't matter who I start or who I bring on. Uh, it's a squad game. It's a team game, and I want them all firing. So, you know, the one that gets on a run and scores a number of goals will probably be the main starter. But we've got three or four good options.